actually a few weeks ago when I went to Joe's pod, yeah. uh, Academics was there. And this was the night that Family Matters and I want to say, was it Meet the Grams that dropped? I can't remember. But mm -hmm. yeah. whenever like the world stopped because Kendrick and Drake both dropped in the same night, Academics was on a pod. And he used Mob Ties as an example, saying, you know, there's a lot of songs that I don't mind if Drake had reference tracks to. But I had, a, a, or I heard an inclination that Vori helped him out with mob ties. And academics as, and said that? Academics. And he's like a known Drake fan. He's like, as a Drake fan, it would hurt me to that for that to be confirmed. Oh, he hurt. It would hurt Damn, me if he literally mob, said that? Oh. Yeah, Check he, on it would hurt him if mob ties was <laughs> something that Drake didn't really write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because those are the type yeah. of bars we expect yes. the rappers to actually mean write Duh. and rap Duh. and mean and relate to. So Bro. That's one. That was the latest one. That was the one that kind of opened and, Pandora's box for yeah. this weekend. And there's been and, more. Because yeah. now there's a ton. Because that was supposed to be the gangster. I want to say that real quick. Because that was supposed to be the gangster record. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, yo, I got some ops. This is what's going on. You know what the, the ironic part about that song is? Talk to me. He says, hire some help. Get rid of these niggas. Drake, don't Yo. tell me that's what you did. Don't tell me that's what you did. No, no. Well, hire some help. Get rid of these niggas. Did you hire Vori? He literally hired some help. Also, Oh, Reggie, go. I just the, just a funny tweet from my yes. friend Wango. He said, Talk "I listened to, to the Vori Mob Ties <laughs> reference track just to confirm that I'm not with the Ra Ra. I am a Dada." It was actually Drake's idea, not Vori's. So that was yeah. so Drake. You know, tweeted a little bit, but he was saying shit like that. So right, right. Yeah. And I wanted to kind of just give some quick definitions before we go into the rest oh, of the yes. reference tracks, right? Because I know it's just some people, like you said, we're abreast of kind of what certain things mean, and some people are just like, "What the hell are y'all talking about?" Mm -hmm. Um. Usually, reference tracks are used as a template, right? So, an artist who's a songwriter will go into the booth over the same beat, give their interpretation of maybe some direction you could take, right? Or maybe you can inflect your voice here, or kind of like a cheat sheet in the like sense. Like a skeleton. Yeah, like, sort of like a skeleton, right? Yeah. So, you could go in, do things quicker, get out of there. Like a reference. Like a, like a true reference, <laughs> right? And I think what's kind of like the line is kind of getting blurred these days because there are artists and there are acts who are basically just copy and pasting. Mm -hmm. Facts. Where it's like, nah, bro, just sing that shit and I'm going to say it just like that. Mm -hmm. Word Aren't some reference word. tracks like that, though? They're, People they're, do copy and paste? Yeah. See, that's the thing, though. Reference tracks are reference tracks. What the artists decide to do with is on them. So they could have left it, Reggie, at a reference where it's like, you know what? I'm going to take that flow, mm -hmm. but I'm going to change all the words out. I'm going to swap mm -hmm. all the words out. Some, some people just go, you know what? Nah, yeah. I'm going to keep the flow. I'm going to keep the words. I'm going to keep exactly how you did it because I like the way you did it. And here's a song. Mm -hmm. So uh, just for those confused. No, no doubt. Yeah. Let's, let's listen to a few others. Let me know if y'all- Damn, how many drop? Are y'all familiar with these songs? If you've heard these songs? And then also, which one sounds better? Just for my ego. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's three right there. And I, I have a few more if y'all do want to hear- I have a question. I hate to be that girl. I'm sorry. No, let's do it. Like, let's I, do just, it. I just, I don't know. <laughs> but like, what, like, how do we know that this is not AI? I'm just curious. That's I don't a, know. That's a phenomenal question. That's, I, that's an I, I don't know if people are going to laugh know, at me, but know, like, it's like, I know, I know he probably does have reference. I don't know, but yeah. I know Vori is listed on the credits on the, um, on that, on Mob Ties. Oh, shit. Yeah, so. So it's, it's true. Like, it's yeah, true. Yeah, so if it's like, damn, if that damn. one is, is true. And then, that one hurts because yeah. you literally said this point, but like, he was like, that's where we expected him to get gangsta. Blah, blah. And like, if it was a pop record, like the Needle record with Nicki Minaj and the reference track was yeah. like, for the hook, mm -hmm. we, I feel like we would have accepted it. Like, okay, fine, whatever, Drake. But now that it's Mob Ties, exactly. songs like that, we're yeah. like, what the fuck is going on right And then now? the other ones they've all played, right? Party is OVO. Yeah. So it's it, it's not hard to see the other the all the flip side of this is Drake has also penned a lot for others. Like I know he penned heated for Beyonce, right? I think the confusion is um when you call yourself the number one MC and you got the number one pen game, this is why people are trying to do these things. Of course, because of the beef that happened and people are trying to expose you, trying to make you look in the worst light. But once again. You called yourself number one. You called yourself numero uno for however many long. Mm -hmm. And now people are like, oh, damn. Well, a lot of my number ones don't have any reference tracks. Mm -hmm. So again, we love Drake's music. Yeah. It's not going to stop. Like, sure. yeah, but when it comes to the, that number one pen, it, it is hard to have that title with all of this shit on <clears> you. 
the 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 crazy thing about this, and again, I, maybe I will play a few other songs. Yeah, that was a good little compilation video. Little mix. Oh, you yeah. found like the perfect one to play. <laughs> nah, I got you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but there's a few other songs on here, but Damn, but not Ratchet Legend. Happy birth- what the fuck? Yeah, Ratchet you know Happy what, Birthday. Reggie? I'm gonna break your heart a little bit more because <laughs> you broke my heart and said I can't go on girls trips. Uh, you <laughs> can't. I'm gonna fuck by this that. up for you. Yeah, we know this one. Fifty band. Who is this? Quentin. Quentin Miller. This just doesn't that sound is... as good, by the way. No, it so doesn't. I stand on what I said. But true say though, a reference track is meant for that. Hundred bands, man. Been discussing, man. OMG. I'm gonna let him see. A lot of people that give reference tracks are okay that they're probably not gonna do the performance that that artist is gonna do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But while reference tracks aren't a knock to the writer, mm-hmm. I think. For any of these people where it's coming out, like I remember I watched an interview with Quinn Miller. I can't remember the platform. I do want to say that it was a Vlad interview because I feel like those gotcha. are the really in-depth interviews. So I did see Quinn Miller say at some point, yo, while my songs are being pl- blasted everywhere, plastered everywhere, people are bumping the shit that I wrote, the the the, the cadence that I created, yeah. mm-hmm. nobody knows that it's me. It did feel good. I did feel... <laughs> vindicated in some way when Meek Mill came out and said, yo, that's not Drake, that's him. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. so there there is, because most songwriters are songwriters because they weren't able to break through as an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of songwriters want to actually be artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, maybe they aren't marketable. Maybe their voice isn't good enough. Their talent just isn't there. I think it's a confidence thing. It could also be a confidence thing, but Ooh. let's and I'm, I'll use myself as an example, right? Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I can write decently. I've never mm-hmm. tried to write a song, mm-hmm. but as a writer, you feel like you oh, could I could write pen this shit. Down. Yeah. I could probably pin something. Yeah, that's how it works. But I can't perform it. Right. I can't get in the <laughs> studio and lay a fucking verse. I'm not saying you, but like yeah. that doesn't mean that doesn't mean just because you wrote that doesn't mean you're the star. It, yeah, it, yeah, does, yeah. it doesn't mean that it will translate to the masses. Mm-hmm. So a lot of writers have that hurdle of acceptance as well. Yeah. It's like you know what. This, sometimes it feels like a thankless position. Sometimes it feels like I'm not loved by the industry. Like I have a lot of friends who have tried to write. Um, again, and, and, and this is probably one of the instances where a writer being my favorite artist kind of works in my favor mm-hmm. because I'm familiar with his story, right? Like Neo, he was a writer before he became an artist. Exactly. And his story before he became an artist is... You know, the, the labels didn't really understand me, so they shelved me. The music that I was making, they people just didn't identify with. I didn't meet the right person to make me a quote-unquote star. So when you hear a Let Me Love You by Mario, and you're like, yo, this song is phenomenal. Yeah. And then you find out somebody like Neo wrote it before he was an artist. Oh. And then it makes sense. Like, wait, so he did have something there, mm-hmm. clearly, mm-hmm. But it just didn't translate at that time for whatever reason. So you see a ton of Quentin Millers. You see people like Avori. You see people like a Beam. Kendrick Lamar, he mentioned Beam and not like us. Mm-hmm. Make sure you keep Beam around, mm-hmm. is what he said. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Beam, I got introduced to Beam personally on a song with Justin Bieber. He was oh, on yeah, Justin no, no. Bieber's last song. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, first, the first thing that I thought, and maybe I should play that song. The first thing that I thought is, yo, this guy sounds like Party Next Door. <laughs> He's he also a, on a Beyonce song. Yeah. He collected Mad Infinity Stones. Yeah, um, he, has a, he has a Caribbean background. So him yeah. and Party Does shit. he really? Yeah, him But and he party also shit. makes phenomenal solo song. music, though. Yeah, he does. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to pull that song up. But somebody like a Beam, who I was introduced to him because he got on a major artist song, right? right? Justin Bieber at that time. And then to hear he's affiliated with Drake. But now to hear or know or, or to learn that he's a writer, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of writers get their starts, or a lot of artists, I should say, get their start as being writers. Because mm-hmm. they couldn't find any other avenue to get their art out there. Yeah. And Drake, like you said, Infinity Stones, he's clearly just been collecting, if these rumors are true, if these reference tracks aren't AI, is Vori. Who we see Vori. A lot of us really mm-hmm. like and, and love Vori. Vori I think. was uh, Dream Chasers. It's Vori. It's Quentin Miller, who, as of recent, he's been working with Nas and other artists. He hasn't gone. Like, his career is still existing because he's super talented. Mm -hmm. And it's people like Bean, Mm -hmm. who has top, uh, uh, excuse me, chart-topping songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there there is what I I believe was there's smoke, there's fire. That's a fact. Personally. Even people like um, Money Long, like, she, she wrote... She wrote mm-hmm. pop songs for people like Kelly Clarkson mm-hmm. for years, for years, for years. She wrote and California Kingbed. 
Mm-hmm. And Victoria Monet. Victoria Ro- uh, Monet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande writing so you know many. What I'm you see how no one has an issue with people writing for these pop stars. Mm-hmm. That's why, yeah. The this, fact that it was songs the like Mob Ties were there like, oh my god. There like, you go. That's that's the main difference. Do y'all mind if I play this Beam song? Go crazy. I, I, I don't know where his verse comes in. Yeah. So for me, when I heard that, I'm like, yo, who is mm-hmm. this dude and where did he come from? And how did he get on a Justin Bieber song? <laughs> but now to know that he's also affiliated with Drake oh, yeah. and Kendrick Lamar saying like he wrote for Drake too, it makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, Beam worked on More Life as well. And we remember More Life was the playlist that mm-hmm. was had a, very, a lot of Caribbean, Caribbean influence. influences on it. Yeah. So Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a lot going on. I ain't gonna lie. But this made me realize, because again, damn. Is there a mall? Oh, yeah, because why are all these getting leaked? <laughs> yeah, like, I thought all of that was just, you know, fodder. Is it a mole or does, like, mm. <laughs> the people around Drake really hate them? 